Oh man, now you know this one. This one was tough. You you know this this had to be a really tough conversation with getting rid of Tay Tay because he's been with the Ravens for four years. I remember his rookie year. He was what he was number thirty six. I want to say, but his rookie year. Um, this guy was always around the ball, always picking up fumbles, getting the pick. He was always around the ball. And I'm like, all right, this guy, Tavon Young, okay, he's something. And I liked him. I, I lo loved his game and felt like, all right, this dude can play. And he's shown when he does play that he can play. But that was the biggest issue was that he just – wasn't out there to play. He would not be out there to play. Um, and it had been, it would be like he would play one year. Like his rookie year, he played. Sophomore year, he got hurt for the season. Then he follow up, then play the following year. And then the year after that, he would get hurt for the season. Um, and it's crazy because I had always heard, and I'm sure all of you all saw it too, to where there were a lot of Ravens, like, um, not even reports, but a, a lot of Ravens, some reporters, some uh, people that cover them, they felt like, oh, this could be a move that the Ravens could make if they released Tavon Young. And I was thinking, uh, I could see them doing it, but I, I don't know. Yeah, they could save some cap space, and they got a limited amount of cap space, uh, even though I feel like the, the cap is cap, but... They opened up a space by releasing Tavon Young, and now he's a free agent. He's gone. That's it. And he had just signed a, uh, a contract extension a couple years back, but he got hurt, I think, both years. I mean, the first two years of that contract extension, he got hurt. Then this year, he ended up playing the majority of the year. Um, he did miss like a tiny bit of time, but nothing crazy and nothing that – he would normally miss, but the Ravens, they, I guess they felt like, you know what? It's just the salary is not worth the the risk, so to speak. Now, um, Tavon Young was primarily the Ravens slot corner. So obviously the draft hasn't happened yet. Free agency hasn't happened yet. I mean, teams are starting to make moves and whatnot, but now what are the Ravens going to do at slot corner? Well, you have Marlon Humphrey. He's played a lot of slot corner over the years, uh, and he did that because of Tavon Young's absence. Because Tavon Young had been hurt a lot, so they would always kick Marlon to the inside. Uh, but now Tavon Young's gone, so what are you going to do? Uh, I know there was a lot of talk last year about the possibility of one Ardarius Washington, him playing some slot corner. Uh, but then he ended up, I think he broke his foot last year, and that ended his year uh, prematurely. So we never really got to see anything from that. Uh, there's possibility of Brandon Stevens. because uh, And that all depends on how free agency in the draft goes, uh, what the Ravens do at the safety position. If they have him still be in that safety, or if they have him do a multitude of things with him playing some cornerback and some safety, we'll see. So Ravens are certainly, um, they're going to have their work cut out for them in finding that replacement uh, for Tavon Young. They do obviously have some in-house options, uh, but they're going to have some outhouse options too. So we'll see exactly how they address it. Um, Ravens, they I know a lot of Ravens fans are always like, man, Ravens, like, wake up. When are you going to do something? But Ravens, they, they take their time. They they take their time their time when they're doing all this like free agency and stuff and making moves to get a little even further under the cap and whatnot. They take their time with this stuff. Um and so this was no surprise. I'm sure there will still be more moves to come. I thought that they weren't gonna start till like Thursday. Uh but they decided, you know what? Nope, we're gonna do it a day earlier. A day earlier. I said, Okay, all right, Ravens. Well, um, and then with uh, with Alejandro Villanueva with him retiring and uh, Tavon Young being released, uh, they created about eleven and a half million in cap space. Uh, and Jeff Zrebic said that leaves them with about eighteen mil heading into free agency. Uh, and then of course they got some other moves that they could make. Um, there has been talk. It's like everything so far that is expected that the Ravens are going to do, they've done it. And it's it's just been these two moves. But everything that's been expected has happened so far. 
Everybody expected them to get rid of Alejandro, but he ended up retiring. They said, yeah, y'all not getting rid of me. I'm retiring. But a lot of people expected Tavon Young to be released as well. And now that's done. Um, so with that being said, uh, some other moves that a lot of people had on their charts uh, was the possibility of one Miles Boykin being released. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. Uh, another one was um, Ben Powers. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, another one was Marcus Peters. Getting a uh, contract extension, them reworking something with his deal. We'll see what happens with that. Because I think that one is one one single move that can open up a huge amount. I think about 10 million cap space, but don't quote me on that. But I think it's about 10 million cap space that they can possibly open up. Obviously, the, the, the biggest way that they can open up cap space is by Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens agreeing to a contract extension. But... That's not happening. That's not going to happen. At least not this offseason. Again, my opinion. I, I don't see it happen this offseason. I just don't. Not at all. I think the earliest that it could possibly happen is 2023. And I do stand by that. Uh, things could obviously change from here to whenever. Uh, but as of right now, I don't think that's happening anytime soon. And that's not even necessarily a bad thing. Um, but it's just I think that's on the back burner for now. So Ravens are going to have to figure out how to work around that. They're going to have to figure out how to really finagle this cap thing. Because you know, like again, there's ways around it. I mean, a, a Raven player said it yesterday. Tony Jefferson, he said it yesterday. He said if a team wants a player, there are so many ways around the cap. He said it. So I know some people be like, oh, man, what are you talking about? The cap is cap. You got a player in the NFL that said it. So <laughs> it can be done. So Ravens could just they be be creative. They could be creative. Uh, but with Tay Tay, man, oh, that's that's tough. I, I wonder where he's gonna go. Um, I, I wonder like what's next, man. Cause that's crazy, man. That's crazy, man. Um, mm, that's now with Ravens with them releasing uh, Tavon Young. You got to have a plan in place. And again, we talked about that. Yeah, you got Marlon Humphrey. You got Marcus Peters. Who's left, though? They uh, look to be uh, trying to work on a deal with Chris Westry. We'll see. You're losing Anthony Avery. You're going to lose Jimmy Smith. So those guys are going to be gone. Um, so who's next? You did sign uh, Khalil Dorsey to a, a future reserve deal. Um, and there was somebody else. Not Khalil Dorsey. Not Khalil Dorsey. Kevon, oh, Kevon Seymour. There we go. Kevon Seymour. They signed him to a future reserve deal. Um, but hmm, it just it just makes you wonder who, who are they looking at? What are they doing? Cause they uh, we'll see. We'll see. Cause you know them Ravens, man. They uh they always up to something. They may not be what you think it is. Well, sometimes it is, but they always up to something. But they know firsthand how valuable cornerbacks are. It's funny because uh, in this passing league, it's like they it's like they get it, but sometimes it doesn't seem like they get it because they know how valuable cornerbacks are. It's a passing league, so they know they need to have as many cornerbacks as possible and as many quality cornerbacks as possible. So it's like, all right, Ravens always stacking up on corners, 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 corners. Love it. They need it. But then on the flip side, it feels like they don't appreciate the passing game as much even though again last year they seem to be headed in the right direction uh but i just wonder if that was only due to all the injuries along the offensive line and especially at the running back position since they didn't have all their guys at running back so they were like okay we can't run like we used to so yeah we got to air this thing out so this year will hopefully let us know because hopefully everybody stays remains well, first off, gets healthy, but stays and remains healthy as well. Um, but yeah, man, shout out to Tay Tay. Uh, probably one of my um, favorite memories uh, from Tavon Young. Um, wasn't even on the field. It was off the field. Uh, there was a, uh, a Ravens fan who his little brother, his little brother had died. 
Um, so he had he had hit me up. He's like, hey, I don't know like how to get in touch with them. I I don't know. He's like seeing if they there was something that could be done. Uh, so I hit them up, hit the Ravens up. Um, no plugs or nothing. You know, I ain't plugged in with the Ravens, but I just went to their little community thing that they have. Um, I forgot what it's called, but sent them an email, told them what the situation was, and they they end up sending out something to the family. Because Ravens, that is one thing, man. We get on here and we talk about front office this, coaching that, players that. We, we talk about all that stuff, and that's cool, whatever. We all got our different opinions, but... One thing you can never say, like Ravens are a very, very great organization when it comes to their fans. They really do a great job by their fans, a phenomenal job. Um, but with that, they, so they did that. But then I ended up reaching out to Tavon Young and told him, hey, like, hey, there's a fan who little brother unfortunately passed. And he just wanted to know if if we send something out there, if he could sign it and, and send it back to him. He said, no problem. No problem. He did not have to respond. He did not have to do anything. He, no problem. So that was my favorite memory uh, of Tavon Young with the Ravens. So shout out to him. Uh, looking forward to see where he, wherever he goes next, man. Because, uh, you know, he ain't stopping. It ain't like, oh, well, he got cut from the Ravens. All right, well, I'm done. No, no. He is still, of course, going to keep going and keep playing as expected. So I hope he does well. Wherever he ends up next, I hope he does well. And you, oh, I wonder, now that I say it out loud, I wonder if Ravens could go throwback like they used to do. I don't really see them doing it much nowadays, but if they could go throwback like they used to do where they would release a player on whatever his current contract is, but then actually bring that player back uh, at a reduced rate, at a reduced salary or whatnot. They did do that with LJ Fort uh, last year. Or was it the year before last? They, they did it with LJ Fort, um, but they don't really do it too often nowadays. Um, but, hey, we'll see if that, that could be an option with Tay-Tay. So, we'll see. Anyway, love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Um, and just like both Tavon Young and Alejandro Villanueva are when it comes to being with the Baltimore Ravens, I'm out. <laughs>